All right. Well, if you're still with me on this, um, this is right. This is the these are the actual ways the series could go if it's terminated when A wins the match. Um, you see, if there are sequences of size four, there are six that would be have two A's and two B's. But clearly, so I have three of them represented here, and these are right. These are when A wins the last. But A has to win the last, right? Otherwise, um, otherwise A won already. So here, the other one, to fill this in, I could have B, B here. And to fill this in with, a, with two A's and two B's, I would have a B, and I would have a B here. But in all of these three cases, A won already. But this is getting toward the idea of the other solution, what the so-called Fermat solution. So Fermat said, Fermat said, um, N plus M minus one games at most are needed. This is if A needs N and B needs M. And he says, compute the probability, play all the games. And probability A wins match. Is the probability A wins at least n of the games. Okay, so in other words, even though the series would terminate after the second game, play the other two and you know already, if A only needed two more to win, all these other series are going to count as an A win, because A has won at least two. So I now include the series A1, A1, A2, A3, A4, even though it's not a realistic series. A1, A2, A3, B4, A1, A2, B3, B4, A1, A2, B3, A4. I would include all four of those. Okay, so in other words, in our example, instead of a P A one A two term, we would have four terms, but we would have them all. So we'd have P A1, A2, A3, A4, and these are all mutually exclusive, so I can just add them. A2, A3, B4. I play all the games, and as long as A has won at least two, I count it. Okay, now if I count this one, what is this probability equal to? Well, P A1 A2 is equal to um, P squared, right? And now this one, this sum, let's call it uh, star star or something. Star star is equal to um, P to the fourth plus 2, uh, 1 minus p, p cubed, plus uh, p squared, 1 minus p squared. Well, this is p squared. This equals p squared. If you do this out, we can take the p squared outside. And now in here, I have p squared. I have plus 2, p 
1 minus p, and over here I have plus 1 minus p squared. You recognize from the binomial theorem, this is just equal to p plus 1 minus p squared, right? That's what that is. But that's just 1. So the whole thing is p squared. Okay? So this, these two probabilities are equal. This is equal to star star, the probability of the sum of them. And this will be true. I can fill in all these probabilities that way. For example, this probability, this probability, so let's write that one down too. Similarly, the actual sequence A1, B2, A3, I could write A1, B2, A3, A4, plus P, A1, B2, A3, B4. They're the same. Okay, so Fermat's idea is very good. So from Fermat, we will write out the formula. So by Fermat, we have probability A wins match. is equal to the sum k equals they need he needs to win or she needs to win at least n and you're going to play all n plus m minus one games that could be required so that's important too is to realize that's the number total maximum number that is required because if i didn't have the minus one then both uh Players would te uh, theoretically and practically be able to win, which should not happen. So this is the maximum number of games that can be played. Once N has been attained by one by player A, it's over. Player B can't win. Or player B attained M. Um, that means player A um, has only N minus 1, and player A can't win. So you need this to be your max. You see in the example before, uh, M was 3, N was 2, which is 5 minus 1 is 4, and that is the max number of games. Okay, and now we have P to the K, at least N, uh, 1 minus P to the N plus M minus 1 minus K, and all the different ways this can happen. So this would be, and I'm putting the binomial coefficient in the wrong place. Usually I put it over here, right? This would be n plus m minus 1. Of these n plus m minus 1 gays, how many ways can we, uh, the player A win k of them? All right, so that's the formula from Fermat. Okay, so let's look for our example then. For our example, player A wins match. is equal to the sum k equals 2 to 4. Uh, 4 choose k. I put it back in the right place. I have p, which is 2 fifths to the k. And I have 1 minus p, which is 3 fifths to the n plus m minus 1 minus k. Okay, let's actually do this and see if we get the same thing. So we get, at 2, we get 4 choose 2. 2 fifths squared, 3 fifths squared, right? Plus 4 choose 3. 2 fifths cubed, 3 fifths plus 4 choose 4, which is 1, 2 fifths to the 4th, 3 fifths to the 0. Okay, um, we can actually compute this. Now let me do what we did before, take a 2 fifths uh, squared outside, and we get 6 times 9 20 fifths, so that's uh, 54 over 25, plus 4, times 3 is 12, 
times 8 is 80. 96, I think, right? 96 over 25 plus this one, 16 over, uh oh, wait, did I, uh, this should only be 1, 2, right? I took a 2 out here. Uh oh, wait, so 9, 9 times 6, this one's right, but this one, 4 times 8, 4 times 2 is 8 times 3. This is 24. Right, I took a 2 fifths squared out. So I have 2 times 3 is 6 times 4. 24 over 25. Here I have, I took 2 fifths squared outside. So here I have 4 over 25. So this is equal to 4 over 25 times um, 78, 82 over 25. If I multiply these, I get 328 over 625. Same thing. You notice how difficult it was to list these. So um, you can imagine if in a very real situation you would want hundreds of trials or thousands and it would be a madhouse, right? It would be very difficult. So um, Fermat's gives you a very computationally sound way to, uh, to do the computation. Okay. All right, so even if you only have a 40% chance to win each game, it's better to be up two games to one in a seven game series, I suppose. According to this, you have slightly more than half a chance to win the series. All right, thanks. Next one's on conditional probability.